So, Tony, we've been looking through a couple of races on D&D Beyond, mm -hmm. and I figure we can kind of, you know, maybe look into some that we've been, you know, kind of going over. In Knowles. Well, right, and we did look at Knowles. Yes. But I, I figure there's also a couple more that we can kind of... Knowles. Let's do Knowles. We're right. doing Knowles. Uh, we're going to be talking about Knowles. Yay. Welcome everyone, I'm Sean, this is Tony, and if you haven't guessed already, we're going to be talking about gnolls. Gnolls, yes. Knowles. Now, uh, you know, Tony, you're, you know a lot about these creatures, and, and normally you kind of toss these at your players as, a, as an encounter. I do, yeah. yes, uh, but I've always wanted to play one. I, I know this seems weird to keep going on and on about it and what have you, but when we were looking through Beyond, I was like really excited when I saw it in the first page. And yeah. Thought, yeah. And now, I, as a normal person, I only know these as basically roided up hyenas. So, yeah, what, no, what, you're you're about right. What what kind of what what would you say kind of like warrants the gnolls to deserve a whole race? They're vicious. They're not unintelligent like the like the orcs. Mm -hmm. Like I okay, orcs I guess are intelligent, but at the <laughs> same time, these are pack animals. Yeah, they they kill. They their first inclination for something when they kill it is to rip it to shreds. They are. They are chaotic in their own right, and they're a hell of a lot stronger than goblins. And oh, goblins yeah. are like your little chaotic people, right? So these are the slightly bigger chaotic. Yes. People. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> you know, you could tell them to get off the couch if you need to. That's they're, true. They're, they are dog people. It <laughs> yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, essentially. But um, they do have their own god, and they have all these great things. But we found one on D and D Beyond mm -hmm. uh, that was that was a great set for no. Yeah, uh, this one's from Badger Jaw, uh, so you can actually find this one. It's actually kind of rising through the ranks of the D&D Beyond uh, homebrew section already, uh, mm -hmm. so it's already getting a lot of attention, uh, but for good reason. I think this one's really nice. It's well-balanced. Uh, it it kind of takes pretty much all the features from the NPC Knoll, mm -hmm. uh, kind of combines it with player features here to kind of make a race, um, and then there's some there's some kind of neat things about it, too. Yeah, it's neat. I, I, I like some of the... In fact, he, he did a really great job with uh, the description of it. It's short, but it, it sneaks in a couple little puns in there, too, which I think is kind of <laughs> neat. So it says on here, whether uh, firmly under Yinogu, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, think so. I always have problems pronouncing that name. <laughs> uh, influence or making their living in a less violent society. Knolls can be best described as aggressive, furry powerhouses. Uh, and this is the one. They can range anywhere from aggressively friendly... Aggressively dogmatic, which I think is, you know, they're religious people, but yeah. at the same time, uh, aggressively unimpressed, uh, and just about any state of being you can stick aggressive in front of. And that's that's what's cool about these guys, is that they are literally vicious mm -hmm. with things, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, right from the start, you do get a plus two to strength and plus one to dex. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. These are more of a physical creature, so, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't see a lot of null spellcasters. Not really, not really really um so and they also reach adulthood around three to four years uh live to about 30 years yeah so not a lot of but, life but in but in null years oh that, well, well that's, that's a lot that's yeah, a, yeah no that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah as far as that goes i mean alignment they're chaotic neutral or evil mm -hmm. uh, chaotic good is not really a part of it you don't really have a lot of robin hood although you probably could play one really kind of cool with that i think that, yeah that would be kind of a cool idea to kind of like separate himself from the pack kind of this like yeah. little, little good little puppy that that from from the litter so <laughs> uh size is pretty tall they're about seven feet tall yeah. we'll go from there but the cool thing about these is their features that they get mm -hmm. obviously dark vision because as a sure. you're in these caves and these tunnels all the time and all that um but they get bite as well. Yeah, um, and, and there's uh, maybe one or two other races that get bites. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, uh, instead of like making like a regular unarmed attack, you can basically use your teeth and your bite uh, to deal the 1d6 damage plus mm -hmm. your strength modifier. Which is pretty cool because you, you get that bonus, your strength modifier yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. So obviously you're going to be biting a lot harder. Uh, as a fighter on this, I think either a, a fighter... Like a high, uh, this is good for a high strength fighter. Yeah, definitely. Which is kind of cool because mm -hmm. you don't really see a lot of those. A lot of people end up going high dexterity on fighters. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, but after bite, you then get this cool ram rampage ability. Yeah, and I think this is probably 
the most unique feature about it. So essentially, when you reduce a creature to zero hit points, you don't have to actually have to attack it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you reduce it to zero hit points with a melee attack on your turn, you can use your bonus action to move half your speed and make a bite attack. Which is cool, because then you've got that, that automatic attack that you go for it, mm -hmm. and it, it pulls in that idea of being vicious with... Oh my gosh, yeah. I, you, you visualize like this rabid wild animal kind of like, you know, finishing a creature and then like going for the next one. And what if that bite attack that you just made reduces that creature to zero hit points? It doesn't say that you don't make another one. That's true. Imagine if you like Although action it does say surge, it use it as a bonus. Or action. if you action surge. Yeah, see? And then, like, keep, like, chain it. So there, there's some potential in that But see, and I, I love that idea. Yeah, I know, yeah. I I, th I think it just kind of speaks well to what the null is. This is just pure aggression, pure, you know, uh, viciousness of, mm -hmm. of what it is. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of times gnolls can be depicted in a lot of different ways. I remember back when I was playing uh, my early MMO days with mm -hmm. it, and I don't know if I can officially mention an MMO. I guess I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, DD. sure. I uh, used to play, what, EverQuest a long time mm -hmm. ago. Um, and it was never, it's like, I remember sitting there and going, I want to play a Null. This would be a great race. And then EverQuest 2 came out and they released this entire little expansion around Nulls, but you still couldn't be one. And it was like this whole thing of like, <laughs> yeah. I really want to play this race. And it, it just didn't really happen with that. But if you think about it, we got bird people, we got turtle people, we got cat people. Yeah. I'm surprised dog people are on the list. And you know, what's great, you know, in nature, you know, dogs have natural enemies. Like, you know, in your own homebrew campaign, I can, yeah. I can imagine, you know, when your player's is a tabaxi and your other player is a knoll, there's going to be just that natural See, conflict it, it there. It creates that awesome idea of, like, of of controversy and things between the players, you know? Yeah. Knolls uh, are always, always vicious, but they're also known for, like, stealing... Uh, young children mm -hmm. and taking them away and eating them. Yeah, it's like that, that whole things. idea. I would have loved to have seen on this because it, it seems like okay, dark vision, the bite, and the rampage. Mm -hmm. And, and, then, and then you also get the frightening presence, frightening like, presence, which is and intimidation. intimidation. Yeah. Um, but I, she, it just brings me right back to those EverQuest days with things. And um, let's see, I, I don't want to get too much into that, but there was always there was there was one town in that. That was always under this constant barrage of attacks mm -hmm. from gnolls, and there was one gnoll in that, and they would always start the the, the event would start and always be grr bark bark grr, <laughs> and then Fippy Darkpaw would come out, and he would run in, and his only job was to run into the town and get killed by the guards, Aww. and it's it's like this whole thing, and then they even brought that back in the other thing. So I I've always had this love for gnolls. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's it's a great race that people can play. It's something that you can add to your campaign, something that makes a lot more sense. Um, and, I, you know, it's something that should be there. I feel. Yeah, and I think part of the reason why it's kind of higher up in that list, you know, it doesn't have a ton of features. But I think the fact that it is a null is kind of special in its own way. It's kind of a unique choice if your player wants to do this. And there's a lot of opportunities to kind of, you know, see how that kind of creature interacts as like a regular player character you mm -hmm. know rather than just like an npc or a monster that you fight see and that's the other thing too is it takes away a great monster mm -hmm. uh for for some of those middle levels as well yeah. which i know we're going to be talking about soon too exactly but mm -hmm. those because the gnolls again they are that chaotic uh grouping yeah. so you don't want to take that away but i like the idea of a, a pact of knoll a pack of gnolls that's like the free gnolls, for example, they're they're they have their own ideas, their own traits. Maybe they're trying to be more than what they <laughs> right, exactly. what they've been viewed. Not as. not follow their 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 history and their ancestors. You Although know, so. their god is pretty vicious too. Yeah, and you can find him in Mordecai and Tom of Foes, oh, yeah. you? He's a nice guy. <laughs> well, um, I think that wraps it up for this one right now. Uh, but you know, definitely check out some of these other ones on D and D Beyond. They're great, uh, fantastic races and classes on there. Um, I know that we're going to be starting very soon with our Stuff at Ignite Gaming Lounge. Yeah, do you uh, want to so, tell them about that? Yeah, so on the twenty first of this month, uh, if you live in the Chicagoland area, we're going to be down at the Ignite location in Skokie. Yeah. Uh, so starting on that Thursday and hopefully every other Thursday, uh, we're going to be going ahead and uh, running some you know campaigns with people there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be kind of cool. It's going to be the 
only digital playground to actually in Chicago have, that can do it. Yeah, to yeah. actually have D and D, and it's a great location. Uh, besides coming down to play games, you have awesome food and drink, uh, and you're around other cool people as well. So we'll put a, a link in the description below of where you guys can sign up if you're interested in coming out and playing with us. Uh, we are running it through Fantasy Grounds, and it'll be a lot of fun. I don't think our streams are going to be from there. Our, our streaming sessions and things we're probably going to either do Sean's campaign or mine, or make up a new one with you guys. But either way, uh, we're going to be getting to those pretty soon. Yeah, and you definitely. can hear our Discord server. Going I know. That, and, and speaking of which, if you have <laughs> questions or if you want to send us some stuff, I highly recommend you send some stuff to our Discord channel. Mm -hmm. We always have someone taking a look at it, and as you can tell, it's blowing up even during when we're recording. So please yep. uh, send us stuff if you got it. We'll put the link right down here, right next to the like and subscribe thing, which is always in this corner now. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, remember the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed. So until next time. Keep, Keep brewing. brewing.